The David Feldman Radio Program is made possible by listeners like you. You sad, pathetic humps. Michael Snyder is our resident film critic. He's in San Francisco this week. These are the movies he's going to be talking about. The new documentary, She's Beautiful When She's Angry. Another new documentary, Red Army. And the following movies that are not documentaries, Predestination, The Humbling, and Paddington. Tell me about She's Beautiful When She's Angry. Well, I will do so, my friend. Uh, it covers a period that lasts from about 66 to 71, and it resonates far beyond that time. It, it's a view of the significant parties who sparked and kind of shepherded the woman's movement in its formative years. And so uh, you've got a lot of different nooks and crannies to cover here. Uh, I mean, there have been so many different uh, kind of splinter groups and offshoots, and uh, feminism itself is such a broad uh, creature, such a broad idea, such a, a broad concept. Bad choice of adjectives. Yeah, I know. Sorry about the problem. Um Anyway, this is a very sleek and very energetic film, and uh, director Mary Dore uses the actual voices and images of over two dozen women who played really important parts in the movement, and she mixes archival and contemporary material, and it's very vivid and, and very funny in time, at times, and it shows uh, basically the roots of feminism and their cultivation in the latter half of the 20th century. you got some uh, minor reenactments here and there, but they're kind of negligible. But over the course of 92 minutes, um, I mean, this addresses the diversity of womanhood and the movements of different schools of thought. Uh, there's controversies and infighting. We've heard about that stuff. But this is a fight, as you know, that continues today on so many fronts, the gender equality in society as a whole, I mean, in the home, uh, the workplace, the halls of education, culture, the arts. We still have all of this uh, brouhaha over uh, reproductive rights. As for the title here, She's Beautiful When She's Angry, the anger depicted here is that the, uh, it's, it's the righteous variety and the dedication of all the people who were involved to basically change the world it, it, for the better is very, very beautiful. I mean, these are determined and passionate women. And the fight continues. That's all I can tell you. Against the Republican Party. Among others, yeah. Red Army. Well, this is genuinely thrilling. It's a documentary which is at the nexus of sports and politics. And the filmmaker is a guy named Gabe Polsky, and he's taking a look at the uh, legendary championship Soviet Union hockey team, Red Army, that was so impactful in sports in the 70s and 80s. But this goes beyond the usual kind of sports cliches, largely because of the significance of the subject as a cultural weapon during the Cold War. So um, we focus on the life and times uh, of the team's captain, and who was kind of a hero of Soviet hockey, Slava Fetisov. And uh, Polsky gets this very close look at the harsh and kind of relentless workings of the Soviet Union's um, sports and propaganda machines. They uh, ran these people like dogs, like slaves. And uh, what's really fascinating is Fedosov has this initial reticence about talking much about the past. Eventually it kind of dissipates, and then the anecdotes come pouring out. I mean, it's like a fast break, right? Mm -hmm. uh, but we get everything from background on the team's origins uh, to the brutality of like what it was like uh, for Fedosov growing up. Uh, the... Uh, Red Army training camps brutality, and also the Russian perspective on, uh, do you remember the Miracle on Ice in 1980? When you got to uh, believe. Yeah, the USA team. Al Michaels. Team, the USSR, yeah, absolutely. The USSR team, do you believe in miracles? Um, they were beaten by the USA, and so it's, it's kind of a darker view of that at this point. Uh, there's also kind of an elegy for, for the Red Army hockey dynasty, because um, as soon as the USSR was undone and the players began an exodus to the NHL, including Fedosov, by the way, who had a pretty good run in the United States, uh, that went, uh, Red Army went down the drain. Uh, but basically, this is a, a big score on so many fronts. I, I was very impressed with Red Army. Oh, I can't wait to see it. All right, predestination. Well, I'm a big fan of Robert Heinlein, uh, one of the great... Um, sci-fi authors of all time. He's the guy who wrote Stranger in a Strange Land, and some of his stuff is kind of sexy and, and, uh, and incredibly creative and, and very whimsical and fantastical. And he wrote a short story called All You Zombies, 
which I always thought was fantastic. And it was about a temporal agent, a guy who was sent on a variety of different time travel trips in order to stop um, killers, uh, to, to stop problems, to stop crime from happening. But he begins crisscrossing on his own time path and crazy stuff begins happening. And basically, Predestination is an adaptation of that story, uh, I believe, um, by a couple of brothers, Michael and Peter Sperig, and it's a, an Australian production, but it stars Ethan Hawke as uh, the temporal agent, who shall go nameless here. And we see him interacting with a handful of people, um, including his boss, who's kind of a cold character, uh, played by another favorite actor, Noah Taylor, who was in Peaky Blinders as the leader of the uh, Italian mob in that wonderful TV series. And he's kind of the boss of this temporal agency. And there's a woman named, uh, well, we won't give her name, but the actress is uh, Sarah Snook, and she is fantastic. I'd never seen her before, and it's a phenomenal performance. Again, an Australian production, but it's set in New York for the most part, and uh, the Midwest uh, in America, and it just, I, I, th I found it like a wonderful gem that has been getting a lot of uh, coverage and a lot of talk about. Uh, it's sort of the kind of movie that falls through the cracks, and I think you can rent and stream it now. Predestination, Ethan Hawke doing one of those B science fiction movies, but a smart one that I found incredibly fascinating and, and puzzling and exciting and a little twisted. Okay. The Humbling. Well, speaking of twisted, um, no, I, I'm not going to suggest that there's anything twisted about The Humbling. It's based on a Philip Roth book. And uh, as we all know, he's dealt in a variety of. Uh, of different sorts of uh, of stories about the uh, Jewish American male and his perspective and uh, uh, the, the things that have plagued uh, this sort of archetype. But in the case of the humbling, he's uh, written about an over the hill stage actor named Simon Axler, who has kind of lost his focus and decides he's no longer going to act. He seems to be kind of losing his memory and losing his mind to an extent. And um, But he meets this young woman who is, identifies as a lesbian, who's known him for a very long time, and um, she hits on him. And their relationship is the crux of The Humbling, which is directed by Barry Levinson, uh, who has done uh, all manner of movies, including Good Morning Vietnam. This uh, adaptation of the Roth book is by Buck Henry, among others. And, um, and we have Al Pacino playing uh, Simon, Greta Gerwig as the girl, Diane Weist and Charles Grodin are in this thing in supporting roles. Nina Ariana plays this kind of lunatic stalker who's kind of chasing down the actor. Uh, Dan Hedaya, uh, Kira Sedgwick, it's, it's really a, 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 just a great cast, and it's a very entertaining little film. It's not a big film. It's not a film that's going to get a lot of coverage. Again, unlike Predestination, though, it's it's not sci-fi. It's not genre. It's, you know, kind of high-end people involved. And uh, it, it's still kind of going to be in the January ghetto and probably forgotten by some. But I thought that it was worth checking out. It's certainly something to see on video. The humbling um, Al Pacino still getting it done. And Charles Grodin. And Charles Grodin uh, playing his agent, uh, his beleaguered agent, uh, nicely done there as well. And, you know, it's kind of nice teaming up uh, a young queen of the Indies like Greta Gerwig uh, in a kind of strange romance with uh, the aging Al Pacino. I thought that was kind of fascinating as well. Barry Levinson. It's been a long time yeah, since, since he's done something. Well, you know, the guy's talented. Come on. Uh, the guy's one of the greats, but... Um, you know, at least in terms of his output, but you know, wag, wag the dog, wag the dog. I think was the last. Yeah, there you go. That's a very cool film. I mean, these films uh, say what you will. Uh, Michael Mann threw a whole lot of money um, uh, out the door to make a film called Black Hat that opened last week, which is basically about cybercrime and international computer hacking, and it's just sound and fury signifying nothing. Movies like uh, The Humbling and uh, Predestination have ideas and you know creative. Uh, people doing creative things behind them. I would just much rather see films like that than something that is like pointless and noisy as Black Hat, despite man's, you know, credits, which include Heat and Manhunter. This is, you know, you don't want to even see a film like Black Hat. And Miami Vice. Well, yeah, his 
original creation for television obviously was groundbreaking. Never much like the feature film that he did based on his own TV show. But, you know, it's, it's a matter of you know, who's going to piss away all that money. You know, what are you going to get for, for the money spent? Who, would, who did the insider? Like, who did the insider? Um, might have been him. Okay, Paddington. Okay, so I see a trailer for this movie, Paddington, based on the beloved British children's character, Paddington Bear, who is the sort of fuzzy, um, adorable, adopted, um, you know, uh, Peruvian bear of story and song in the UK. Kid, kids' books aplenty featuring Paddington Bear. Um, he's sort of uh, lost and on his own in London, and a family adopts him in the book uh, series. And in the movie, it looks like it's going to be slapstick crap. I saw a trailer and went, ah, I don't think so. I went to see the film, and it's one of the best family films I've seen in ages. And I can't understand why they buried it in January when it would have been ideal, particularly with the paucity of good children's films near the end of the year, why they didn't put it out around Christmas. Paddington Bear is a U.K. production, and it features wonderful um, computer animation for the bear, who's voiced by the um, actor Ben Wishaw, who brings the right sense of vulnerability and kind of naivete to the, to the voice of the, the bear. Plus, you have, as the human family that adopts him, the mom and dad are Hugh Bonneville from Downton Abbey and Sally Hawkins from uh, the uh, uh, Blue Jasmine film by Woody Allen. She played the sister. Uh, a couple of Brits, um, wonderful, so beautifully done. The villain in this is a villainous played by none other than Nicole Kidman, who works for the Natural History Museum, is a taxidermist, and has found out about this talking bear and is dying to stuff him. And you also have supporting work from, uh, among others, uh, Jim Broadbent, Peter Capaldi, uh, as the uncle and aunt bear in Peru, the voices of uh, Melda Snorton and Michael Gammon. They pulled out all the stops. It's a wonderful, charming, funny film, and has an interesting subtext about... Um, Great Britain, or indeed Western civilization, sphere of immigrants, believe it or not. So there is a little message in Paddington as well. Highly recommended. Written and directed by uh, Paul King. And, uh, and, and, and great, great family entertainment. While I have you on the line, inherent vice. I'm having trouble getting through it. I have the screener. Should I stick with it? Um, stick with it, but I found it flawed. Um, I thought that uh, it's very, very hard to imagine adapting a Thomas Pynchon novel, and this is maybe the most adaptable, you know, a detective story set in the early 70s in L.A. beach town and, uh, you know, laden with nice performances, but, um, you know, two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes of Joaquin Phoenix can wear a little bit on you. Did you get to your pal Martin Short? As the Not yet, I, I, and I had trouble following the story, and so did the Two other people I was with. It's a little on the convoluted side, but you may have been tired or distracted. It's an interesting film. It's a fascinating film. It is a flawed film. But, um, you know, I think it's worth a slog in her advice. Because I love P.T. Anderson and The Master. Right. I couldn't, you know, I love P.T. Anderson. I couldn't oh, get through. The Master is uh, a high, head and shoulders better than this film. I couldn't get through The Master. Good. You couldn't get through the master. I, I much preferred it to Inherent Vice, but there are things about Inherent Vice that I found intoxicating. Both of us are familiar with Los Angeles and Los Angeles lifestyles, and, and this period of the early 70s is sort of as, as hedonistic as it was. There's a sort of innocence about that time as well, and yet we see the corruption creeping in as this uh, kind of hipster detective falls in with the, the sex trade, drug use, corrupt cops. It was, ignored, it, it was ignored by the Academy, right? Well, so is David Oyelowo, who deserves a, an Oscar nomination. It's, uh, you know, January. It's Martin Luther King month. And how they did not give uh, this fantastic actor uh, a, an Academy Award nod for Best Actor for his portrayal of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. is crazy. And uh, Ava DuVernay. American Sniper? Yeah, Typical you know. Clint Eastwood is a piece of dung. And it's it's just it's just business as usual is what it is. Ugh, it's it's prop, right. propaganda. And finally, nice I, performance. Wait, 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 nice performance by Bradley Cooper. I don't I thought, know, but I yeah, don't know, I agree. I don't, I don't know. Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy is streaming on Netflix. I cannot follow it. Well, this is your own 
problem. I think maybe Ginkgo Biloba would help you. Think or Taylor Soldier Spy. I love that film. That was one of my favorite films of that year. And um, I encourage you to just sit down while you're alert, not at the end of the workday, and give it a shot. Okay. I know. I know. Michael Snyder, resident film critic. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you. You got it, buddy.